Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Saturday, the antepenultimate day of September the 28th day. Do pray this finds you well on a beautiful, dry fall day. Uh, dryness is due to a big, low pressure zone, the remnants of Hurricane Helene that are off to the southeast and if you've been watching the weather news today, boy, places of, in Tennessee and uh, the uh, Western Carolinas are just, I'm familiar with some of those areas down there, Johnson City area, Kingston area, Kingston area, um, Asheville, of course, are just getting slammed with rain, which is often what happens in these hurricanes when the wind maybe dies down. A nice family in Ohio that is without power still all from the hurricane in Ohio. You know, Southern Ohio, granted, but anyway, I will continue to keep those people in our prayers and rescue workers, relief workers, people working to restore power. I did read, I hadn't heard anything about it, I think it would have made the national news uh, that there were some dams that were getting, uh, uh, they were getting concerned that they, they would breach. Uh, that was in the Tennessee area, a lot of dams down there. Uh, the topography lends itself quite well for that, so a lot to pray for. And then I will pass along information uh, as I learn it from the Synod about relief efforts going on. I mean, they'll always take money. If you want to send money to uh, our disaster relief firm, the, the, there's a link on the website. I can also tell you how to access that. Just reach out to me privately or make a donation to the church with earmark for that. Uh, uh, LCMS disaster relief. Always they could use money, like anywhere else, you know. So anyway, keep that in mind. But if they need anything, they'll be aware that I'm sure we're going to have sister churches that will have been affected parishioners in those places that will have been affected. Um, it's a massive storm, so we'll get that word out as quickly as we possibly can. I'm sure we're, you know, there's still not, you know, no power, no cell service or anything like that in places that are that severely affected. So anyway, uh, I'll keep you appraised as best I can, but the best thing we can do um, in any situation as God's people is to pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And tonight, according to the daily lectionary, we turn to the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Tonight, reading chapter 5, verses 1 through 20 which is about halfway, not quite halfway through its very long chapter. And this, of course, is, uh, which goes on for three chapters, the Sermon on the Mount. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its taste, how shall its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. You are the light of the world. A city set on the hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot will pass from the law until all is accomplished. 
Therefore, whoever, whoever relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever, do, but whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. And that is the gospel of the Lord. It is fascinating. So again, as I mentioned, this is the Sermon on the Mount. It's the beginning, and it goes on through chapter 5, 6, and 7. And it's probably the most, it's probably the best, especially the Beatitudes, which we read at the beginning. Um, that's Latin for blessed. Uh, um is probably the most written, discussed, commented on uh, passage of the New Testament. I can't think of another one, this great Sermon on the Mount. In fact, somebody was just asking me about it today, just by uh, coincidence. Uh, and I know that person who probably did the, the same devotion for, about this text as I did this morning, including the Old Testament text for the day. But they shared somebody who was uh, misinterpreting kind of a prominent figure in American Christianity too, but somebody who is misinterpreting and misapplying this sermon on particularly the this sermon on particularly the particularly the passages we read tonight. Now it's easy to avoid in the sense just context, grammar, not what you feel, you know, not what you 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 know, what what do the words say? That's always their starting point. And the best commentaries, and there are good ones out there, you know, that's where they, they start with the grammar. Every good commentary I have starts with just, what do the words mean? What's the grammar, the syntax? And we have boring stuff, but very important stuff because it is the essence of communication. So we're going to look at the grammar and see what this, see what's communicating. But let's you know, remember the context that we have in Matthew. We have the, you know, the infancy narratives, uh, the visit of the Magi, his baptism, our Lord's baptism, his temptation, uh, calling of the disciples, uh, uh, and that very first statement, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Um, that he begins his public ministry. We heard that yesterday. And now this sermon. So he's, he's beginning his ministry, and what does he do? You know, he's going to do miracles and stuff. Yet of course, he already has done them, but it's preach. He is the word. I remember what we hear, like, you know, certainly here, but we hear it you know, predominantly in the Holy Gospel according to St. John, uh, Jesus is the light of the world. Now, that's important for us to keep in mind, too. And that, that idea of God as light and the Messiah as light is found in the Old Testament as well. It's not something that's just invented by these people, not at all. Uh, and again, this is inspired text. So Jesus sees crowds. You know, he's been doing enough uh calls the apostles, he's healing diseases, of course it's going to draw a crowd. And he goes up on the mount, hence the title, Sermon on the Mount, and he sat down his disciples, and they, they come to him. And he opens his mouth, and he begins to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Now, now listen to the grammar there. Blessed are, so that's a presence, you know, the, the type of verb that it is, it's, it's a statement of how reality, but, you know, the, it's not not future probability. Um, this is what you are. You are blessed, the poor in spirit. Theirs is, not will be. There's, we see there's a little slight change in the grammar after this. But blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So the reality of the poor in spirit. Right? You are blessed, and yours is the kingdom of heaven. Because wherever Christ is, there's the kingdom of heaven. Well, what does it mean to be poor in spirit? That's repentance. Right, that's realizing what God says about you is the truth, and we say amen, the things we don't want to hear about, how desperate our situation is, how fallen we are, which is complete, our, our absolutely sinful, everything we do is toil of sin. There's always the selfishness. We grumble against God, our Creator, the God, the God who gives us every good thing. He blesses us with His commandments, and we say no thank you, like we know better. That was kind of the gist of that uh, um, discussion uh, that I was put on to about this this morning. Uh but to be poor in spirit is to realize you know, you're just simply a beggar as you stand before God. And we'll say that in church tomorrow, Lord have mercy. It's where really the service of the word begins. With the Kyrie, which is Lord, a Kyrie lays on Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. And I can't remember which divine service we're doing tomorrow. I think it's three. Um, but uh, um, I get what it would almost certainly be three. Uh so uh, uh, we'll sing that, Lord have mercy. Anyway, beautiful. Poor in spirit, 
means when God, you know, says the things we don't want to hear, but we need to hear, we just simply say amen. But then we, you know, the beautiful things, we turn to him. So we, the poor in spirit, who stand before God and say, Lord, have mercy. Knowing that, man, I can't save myself. You know, think about it. You know, everything you do is, is tainted with sin. I mean, I'm not saying you don't do good works. So we'll get to that in a minute. But even those are tainted with selfishness and sin. Oh, look at me, you know, stuff like that. And you do the good works anyway. You know, even knowing that, but you see that sin within yourself. It's the way we live as Christians. It's um, that symbol used to simultaneously justified advocator and saint, simultaneously saint and sinner. There's a uh, saint and sinner. Epicotter is sin. I think I misspoke there. Um, so, so the very first sentence he says to us in this sermon is this present indicative type of verb that says, "This is this is reality. That you poor in spirit, you're blessed. Yours, yours is the kingdom, of not will be. We can't see it yet, but this is the reality in which we live as God's people. Ours is the kingdom of heaven. We're going to gather tomorrow. Christ is going to be there with us as He promises to be. There's the kingdom of heaven, right?" By the way, God makes his home within you too. There's the kingdom of heaven. And you're a part of that. Okay, That's the reality. Now we have a change. Blessed are those who mourn. They shall be comforted. All right? And, I mean, you know, because for most of us, mourning is a future event. Although, you know, the, I, I think about, I went to a Sox game last Wednesday. My dad was a diehard Sox fan. This is a year you needed to be a diehard White Sox fan. And, you know, you get a little, you know, it's funny how grief hits you. It just, you know, it, it's uh, not, it's not debilitating. It can be at times. Sometimes, you know, you just talk about dad or um, particularly my dad, because he and I were very close. Uh, all my siblings are very close to him. I'm very close to both my parents. And he was just a one of a kind man. And, you know, it's hard not to get weepy sometimes thinking about that. You know, but well, I'm comforted, you know, and when he died, which is almost 10 years ago now, uh, you know, that promise was there. I shall be comforted. The, di the time will come I will stand beside my dad before the throne of God. And God will wipe away, you know, as I'm standing beside my dad and hearing the heavenly host singing, my dad's voice will be one of those. I will uh, uh, have God himself wipe the tears from my eyes. That's Revelation chapter 7. We shall be comforted. But the word does that to us every time we mourn. We hear the promises of that joyful reunion before the throne with all those who have gone before us in the faith. And the Beatitudes are like that. There's this, the, the subsequent ones, until we get to the very end, are this looking for it. They shall, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. You know, to, to as, we, as we seek God's goodness and his mercy and seek to do his good will, uh, we shall be satisfied ultimately. Uh, blessed are the merciful. We shall receive mercy. Jesus is going to teach us parables like that. Uh, Blessed are the pure in heart. And I just said, you know, our hearts aren't pure. I'm pure in heart because I can stand before God with a pure heart, being honest with him, having a good conscience, not because my conscience is clear because I've never sinned. No, but because I am covered with the righteousness of Christ. Pure in the standpoint that when God speaks to me about why I so desperately need a Savior, why his death is necessary, I don't, I don't try to argue with him. Yeah, but, 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 but. I just say amen because I know to you how desperately we need a savior blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of god and then blessed are those who persecuted for righteousness sake for theirs for theirs is the kingdom of heaven so we see that turn again you, you're going to be persecuted for all of this but don't worry about it yours is the kingdom of heaven it's not it's, it's not will be so it's not he's making it clear this is not a reward because you know you um you're going to be persecuted you are going to be persecuted right? period you are going to pick up a cross and follow him, period. Um, but don't worry about it because, as I told you at the beginning, our Lord speaking, yours already is the kingdom of heaven. It's already yours. You don't see it yet. You're going to suffer in this life. Don't worry about it. Yours is the king, kingdom of heaven. Okay, we need to hear that all the time because, yes, we do worry about it. So, and then blessed are you. Now, notice that he's gone. Blessed are those, 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 you know, the peacemakers. You. Blessed are you. Now he's expanding on what we just heard. Blessed are you, you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. So there's the present tense again. Your reward is great in heaven. Now it will be. It, it already is. Your reward is already there. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. It's remarkable, isn't it? Grammar. English. And I was thinking about, you think about how, you, how this stuff is around us all the time. Uh, I do check social media, probably more than I should. 
Um, uh, I really like Twitter. Uh, and uh, um, uh, a story was coming through on, on many feeds, so I had, to, I had to read up on it on many of my uh, people I follow on Twitter. And it was about uh, a flight attendant, and they landed. I don't know what airline it was. It's not important. But the plane landed in San Francisco. And we've, you know, how many times do I hear this? Doesn't, doesn't bother me at all. You know, of course, why would it? Um, but she told us that as she was giving instructions for deplaning, she said, well, have a blessed evening. And somebody, this writer, took great offense with that and talked about how, you know, we're going to become a nation of, like somebody saying have a blessed evening is an indicator of us having a, uh, 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 you know, like having this Christian, that we're becoming a nation of Christian nationalists, which is not true at all. I don't think she even knew what that word meant or that what she was saying. And like, how dare she say that in San Francisco? Like, there's not God's people in San Francisco. It doesn't matter. You know, uh, you know, her intent wasn't to incite that. Her intent was to be a courteous, gracious woman wishing the best for the passengers that she was probably never going to see again. You can't you just accept that with grace. But there it is. You know, just because she uttered something that a Christian would say. We're not the only ones that say that, but she picked up on that invitation. And it sounded like a Christian one. I don't know anything about the flight attendant who said it, but it sounded like a very Christian thing to say. And I, and I did read she might have gotten fired for that, although I only read that once, so I'm not sure how true that is. But it, the point is, we're going to be, you know, somebody's reviled and persecuted and written about simply because they say, have a blessed evening. That's what we are now. But remember, yours is the kingdom of heaven. Your reward is great in heaven. And then he goes on to remind us, you are the salt and the light. You are the temple of the living God. All right, and you go out of the community as a Christian. You get you'll get filled with Christ tomorrow through the Word, through the sacrament. All right, very important. And you're going to take that's why you go to church. You know, you receive the forgiveness of Christ, but you are being filled with Christ. So you take it in the community, and you are a Christian in the community. Christian means a little Christ. You hear me say that to you all the time. And you need to be the salt and the light. You need to be speaking to your neighbors about. And we fail. And I talked about this the other day, but you know, but. Just keep that in mind. Nobody carries around what you do. You know, non-Christians don't. You know, so they need you to be that salt and the light. They need Christ just like you need Christ. And they need the God, good, God's goodness to be bestowed upon him, not just the blessings of forgiveness of life, but you know, their ears and their eyes open to who he is and what they are and the goodness that he bestows upon us in things like the commandments and these wonderful things he's woven into creation. And you know, we see... How good they are and how they lead to a real flourishing in this life um, and a blessing of our communities and our families uh, and we don't put it under a bushel and the point is you know so if you're only Christian for that hour on Sunday morning what good is it to you know what good is that to your neighbor you're, you're nothing you know, you're, 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 you if you put a basket over the light what good is that you know if you uh, if, if salt loses its saltiness you know it's it's to be thrown and trampled under people's feet. It's nothing. All right, so uh, um, uh, let your light shine before this, which is him. He is the light of the world. And you carry that light in you because you are a Christian. And that's very important for us to remember. We, we have a culture that wants to condition us to think you can only be a Christian for an hour on Sunday morning, an hour and a half in our case. Uh, uh, you know, by the time we're all done and everything, that's in the time I get down to Bible study. Oh, speaking of Bible study, just very quickly, I'll mention this again. I don't know why it just popped into my head. We're having a man come from the district office tomorrow, come and talk about, about plan giving, about how to make uh, the church, to think about, pray about making the church a beneficiary of your will and your insurance policy. Not the sole beneficiary, but very important. So come and be, it's not a sales pitch. He's not there to sell anything, just to show you, to tell you why, why it's you know, a blessing to the church. Um, uh, and also uh, um, how to take the steps to get that done if you're so inclined after praying about it and discussing about it with your family. So that's tomorrow during the Bible study hour. All right, but so yeah, by the time I get down there, you know, it's like 1030, 1045. Um, uh, uh, so anyway, uh, you, you just remember, let me finish up here because uh, it's already at 918 is that this is our Lord teaching. He's teaching us not just, you know, the, 
the wonderful things that we possess as Christians. Blessed are the poor in spirit. That's you. Yours is the kingdom of heaven. And you know what you're going to face, ultimately your own death in this life. You know, blessed are those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Uh, and then he says, you know, okay, you know, I didn't come to abolish the law. I didn't come to relax the law. He comes to, comes to fulfill it. Remember, the law is a blessing to us. Uh, and I'm talking, I'm talking about the Ten Commandments. We, he did fulfill all the, the, the ceremonial laws were all pointing to him, and he fulfills the fulfillment of them. So we don't do those anymore. We don't do circumcision. We don't do, you know, uh, we, we celebrate Passover. It's now part of the, it's assumed and completed in the Lord's Supper. Uh, same thing with Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. It's assumed completed in his baptism that comes to us in our baptism. Uh, we are covered with his righteousness as he's put our sin to death, taken our sin away. So anyway, we'll, we'll continue with this tomorrow, Lord willing, and it is just magnificent. Maybe maybe tomorrow, if you have some time, tomorrow afternoon, uh, maybe just or if you have time before church tomorrow, uh, wake up in the morning as part of your devotional. Just read through that. It's only three chapters. It won't take you more than ten minutes. Uh and so you just get the flow of that beautiful sermon. Remember, this it's a great sermon from our Lord recorded for us. You know, first New Testament sermon. You know, of course, spoken by God, as it should be. Uh, all right. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray in these dark and latter days for faithfulness until the very end. We pray for the renewal of those who are withering in the faith or who have fallen away, that their ears may be open and their hearts unstopped, that they may um, return and receive the great gift and blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we pray for each of us to have a receptive heart and mind to your holy word as we gather tomorrow on the Lord's day. And pray for my brothers in office and myself as we prepare to administer and then receive Christ's holy gifts. We ask you to be with those who are crying out to you for healing. And according to your good and gracious will, place your hand upon them, keeping them ever mindful of your forgiveness, your everlasting life, the gift of everlasting life, which is theirs um, through the great gift of Christ our Lord. We ask you to bless them with peace as they face these burdens and be with those who care for them, that they might be your instruments for their well-being. We ask you to be with those who are still suffering the effects as they will be for some time of this horrible storm. We ask you to bless relief workers. We ask you to bless uh, um, emergency workers, keep them safe, and those who are still uh, uh, in harm's way and uh, waiting to be uh, uh, rescued, that they would be safe until that time that uh, they can be uh, uh, carried away into safety. Heavenly Father, be with those who mourn because of the deaths that have occurred and comfort them with the cross and empty tomb of our Lord Jesus Christ. We, we ask you to uh, minimize further damage in these communities. Uh, as we are reminded again, though, that you indeed uh, um, are God, and we indeed are simply creatures. Heavenly Father, we ask all of this in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils, and dangers of the night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. Put into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll turn to Christ Be My Leader, 861.
Christ be my leader by night as by day. Safe through the darkness, for he is the way. Gladly I follow, my future is care. Darkness is daylight when Jesus is there. Christ be my teacher in age as in youth, drifting or doubting, for he is the truth. Grant me to trust him, though shifting as sand. Doubt cannot daunt me, in Jesus I stand. Christ be my Savior in calm as in strife. Death cannot hold me, for he is the life. Nor darkness, nor doubting, nor sin and its stain can touch my salvation. With Jesus I reign. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed rest. By God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.